Hey everyone and welcome to the second installment of my videos about Final Fantasy. Inspired by currently playing the online version, I decided to make some videos about this game. You can check out the Final Fantasy 7 video as well. This one will be about Final Fantasy 8. Right off the bat, it is clear that Final Fantasy VIII is a completely different game than its predecessor. Sure, it's another JRPG with some pretty weird plot twists, but contrary to Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII mainly resolves around humans, and resembles our world more than any other, with its factions, schools and armies. The game features technology not unlike ours, and has a storyline that has you travel to towns inhabited by humans instead of flying professors. In Final Fantasy VIII you cannot operate a weirdo with a megaphone or a lab tiger, but you play actual people, like the protagonist Squall with his gun blade, good for nothing fighter Zell and the pretty Rinoa, who has a similar role as Ares in Final Fantasy VII. The game is less grim and gloomy than its predecessor in my opinion. No life-threatening events on a global scale or weird things like that, but mostly some frustrated adolescents who get mixed up in matters way above their seed pay grade, even though somehow the devs felt the need to fly to the moon. Nonetheless, the story is once again compelling. I can still remember it to this very day, including most of the cutscenes you're viewing right now. Because back then this was state-of-the-art CGI, literally unseen before. It combined my love for movies and games in a single game. Very impressive. I didn't talk about this in the previous episode because I don't remember me listening to the music of Final Fantasy 7 that much. I mean I did of course, but I wasn't like wow this is so good. No I wasn't, even though now I think wow this is so good, but back then no. Final Fantasy 8 however completely changed that for me, just by the intro video alone. Of which I will show now a sequence. How music and images were integrated in these cutscenes is absolutely fabulous. I'm also a fan of classical music in general and the theme hits all the right buttons for me. It reminds me of the use of the prologue of Wagner's Tristan and Isolde in the movie Melancholia. The one big new minigame that was introduced in Final Fantasy was a card game named Triple Triad. At first it seemed to just be a card game which you could play against anyone willing to play, but later I found out about the various Guardian Force skills to turn cards into items or enemies into cards. That way the cards you won had a lot of value and could be used to craft weapons and items, such as the Lionheart weapon for Squall, which you could get really early on making you pretty overpowered. Final Fantasy VIII still used the waiting timers but added a nice twist with Squall's gunblade. Pressing the trigger on your controller at the right time increased the damage of Squall's gunblade. This was true for the limit breaks as well, which make the combat a bit less repetitive and boring. Because the story is so engaging, I didn't mind the occasional grind. Also, some enemies carried special magic, which you needed to extract in order to buff your stats, which could take ages, but in the end it was definitely worth it and the whole system around gathering magic resulted in some planning before you headed into the world. You didn't want to enter a fire cave on a timer without some ice magic stocked up for example.
All in all, Final Fantasy VIII had me a little less engaged than VII did. It was more accessible, I felt, and also less difficult. I constantly died in Final Fantasy VII at the start, running into world bosses and things like that, but I completed Final Fantasy VIII relatively unscathed. The story was more streamlined as well, with less stuff going on on the side. I love that about the game. I don't mind a somewhat linear game if the story is told well, which it definitely was in this case. I don't need a virtual amusement park to keep me interested. Just good gameplay and engaging characters is enough. That's it for this video. Let me know what you enjoyed most about this game in the comments down below. Up next is of course Final Fantasy IX, my least favorite one on the PlayStation, but still a very good game. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.